if you own a firearm, you definitely want that firearm to be dependable. So which CLP is the best? We've got a bunch of different brands to test today, so let's find out. In the first test, we'll see which CLPs prevent wear and which ones don't. Then we'll see which one's best at blocking corrosion. We'll see which ones do the best job of cleaning. At a price of $15 for 16 ounces or 94 cents per ounce is this Ballastol brand. Lubricates and protects firearms, lock, stock, and barrel. Designed for firearms, leather, knives, tools, locks, marine, wood, metal, and rubber. Forms a feel that protects against rust. We're going to test that. There's no information on the packaging regarding where the ballast stall is made. The U.S. military requires CLPs meet requirements that are spelled out in the MIL PRF 63460F. The MIL PRF requires that CLPs are tested using a lubricity tester. So let's kick off the first test using a lubricity tester that I built a while back. Let's first measure out a half ounce of the ballast stall. Throughout the testing, the amount of downward force will remain the same for all brands. I'll first install a test pin in the lubricity tester and then we'll rotate the wheel until it's fully coated with the CLP. I'll then rest the test pin on top of the wheel. The test will last right at one minute. Unfortunately, there's quite a bit of noise coming from the friction between the wheel and the test pin. And the tester is using nearly 500 watts. So there's a lot of friction taking place and the ballast all just doesn't seem to be offering very good film strength, but there's only one way to find out. It's been right at one minute, so let's take a closer look at the test pin. And there's quite a bit of metal in the ballastol test cup. I'll use calipers to measure the wear scar on each of the bearings. Using the microscope will also help me line up the measuring points. 7.26 millimeters for the ballastol, which is a pretty large wear scar. At a price of $17 for 8 ounces, or $2.13 per ounce, is this cleanse oil. The cleanse oil comes with a sprayer. Cleans, protects, lubricates, and prevents rust. It's effective at removing oils, dirt, copper, lead, and other contaminants. The cleanse oil is made in USA. Before we test the cleanse oil, I'll clean the wheel with brake parts cleaner. Then I'll sand the wheel and once again clean it with brake parts cleaner to remove all traces of the product. I really like the viscosity of the cleanse oil. It just seems to have the right viscosity to allow for easy application. A very low viscosity product is going to run quickly and drip all over the place. And when it's too thick, it's going to be very difficult to apply. And the cleanse oil is off to a much better start than the ballast oil with a lot less noise since there's a lot less friction taking place. And the tester never even made it to 400 watts or nearly 100 watts less than the ballast oil. Very impressive. I noticed that the metal test pin seems a lot cooler to the touch. So less friction and heat in the cleanse oil wear scar is extremely small. The cleanse oil container looks pretty free of metal. The cleanse oil is on the left and the ballast oil is on the right. And it's not even close. The cleanse oil easily came out on top with a wear scar of only 1.81 millimeters compared to 7.26 for the ballast oil. At a price of $10 for 4 ounces or $2.50 per ounce is this break free CLP. Proven to perform in temps ranging from minus 65 degrees Fahrenheit to 475. We're going to test that. The break free CLP is made in USA. It includes friction reducing anti wear additives. We're going to test that. Shake well before use. And the viscosity of the break free CLP seems very close to the same as the cleanse oil. And the break free CLP is off to a pretty good start. And the tester briefly went up to 478 watts before dropping to around 400. So a little bit more friction compared to the cleanse oil, but it appears to be doing a great job. And there is a small amount of wear metal inside the break free CLP container. And the wear scar on the break free CLP test pin is a lot smaller than the ballast oil, but not quite as small as the cleanse oil at 4.15 millimeters. At a price of only $17 for 6 ounces, or $2.83 per ounce, is this Slip 2000. The Slip 2000 claims to be an extreme weapons lubricant. Pure synthetic metal treatment will not attract dust, dirt, or sand. The Slip 2000 contains a proprietary anti-wear agent that reduces friction wear by 95 to 98%. We're going to test that. The Slip 2000 is made in the USA. And the Slip 2000 seems to be a little more viscous than the break-free CLP, but still seems like it would be very easy to work with. And the Slip 2000 doesn't seem nearly as slippery as the cleanse oil or the break-free free CLP. The tester needed over 500 watts at the start of the test before it began dropping. So unfortunately it experienced more friction than all the other brands so far. And there's quite a bit of metal inside the Slip 2000 container. Break free CLP is on the left and Slip 2000 is on the right. And the wear scar on the Slip 2000 is over 3 millimeters larger than the break free CLP at 7.41 millimeters. At a price of $13 for 4 ounces or $3.25 per ounce is this Frog Lube CLP. It claims to be the future of gun care. All natural, non-toxic, and earth safe. USDA certified bio-based product. The frog lube is made in the USA. I'll add plenty of frog lube to maintain a coating on the test wheel during the one minute test. And the tester briefly went up to 487 watts before it began dropping off. So unfortunately, there's quite a bit of friction taking place, but not quite as much as the Slip 2000. And the Frog Lube test pin is on the left, and the Slip 2000 is on the right. And the Frog Lube performed quite a bit better with a wear scar of 5.67 millimeters, but not as well as some of the other brands. At a price of $8 for 2 ounces, or $4 per ounce, is this Hops 9 Boar Snake? 
Ceramic CLP. All-in-one cleaner, lubrication, and protectant. Designed to break down and remove carbon, lead, and powder fouling. Contains corrosion inhibitors to prevent rust from forming. The hops is made in USA. And the hop CLP seems to be a little more viscous than the break-free CLP. And the sound of the metal-on-metal -metal grinding is pretty obvious with the hops. And the tester is at over 500 watts with quite a bit of friction between the metal wheel and the test pin. And there's quite a bit of metal inside the hops container. Hops is on the left and the frog lube is on the right. And the wear scar in the hops is just over 2 millimeters larger at 7.72 millimeters compared to the frog lube. At a price of $15 for 3.4 ounces or $4.41 per ounce is this Extreme 4 CLP. Advanced Weapon Technology Lubricant with special anti-friction additives to improve function. Bonding agents maintain surface adhesion for easy cleaning and reliability. It's full auto rated. 100% synthetic formula. Prevents rust and corrosion in the harshest environments. There's no information on the packaging regarding where this product is made. And the Extreme Force is a little more viscous than most of the other brands. There's definitely less of a grinding sound with the Extreme Force compared to the hops. And the tester needed just over 480 watts before it began dropping. So not quite as much friction as the hops, but more friction than some of the other brands. Extreme Force is on the left and the hops is on the right. And the Extreme Force performed quite a bit better with a wear scar of 5.02 millimeters compared to 7.72 for the hops. So do these individual CLPs work as well as the individual products designed to clean, then lubricate, and then protect? We're going to find out using this Hops Number no. 9 kit, which costs $19. Includes two ounces of gun bore cleaner. The kit also includes two different containers of lubricating oil. The smaller container is a precision pinpoint lubricator. And the viscosity of the lubricant in the Hops kit seems to be about the same as a cleanse oil and break-free CLPs. And there's quite a bit of metal grinding that's taking place. 518 watts is the most yet, so there's quite a bit of friction and damage taking place. Unfortunately, there's quite a bit of metal flake inside the Hops Kit test cup. Hops is on the left and Extreme Force is on the right. And the wear scar on the Hops Kit Lubricant test pin is the largest yet at 8.52 millimeters. So why bother with all these specialized CLPs when you can just use a product like Fluid Film which costs less than a dollar per ounce? It even claims to work on guns. Fluid Film is made in USA. And Fluid Film has a very high viscosity compared to all the other brands except for the Frog Lube. And the high viscosity just isn't helping very much. And there's quite a bit of friction underway with the Fluid Film with the energy use meter at over 500 watts. There's a dark pocket in the middle of the test cup and it's hard to say for sure if it's metal or just the color of the product. Fluid Film is on the left and the Hops test kit pin is on the right. And the Fluid Film did quite a bit better with only 6.59 millimeters of damage compared to 8.52 for the Hops. Moving parts on a weapon really rely heavily on a very good lubricant. So if you're looking for a product that provides the best protection of those moving parts against wear, the Cleanse Oil came in on top with a very impressive 1.81 millimeter wear scar. The Break Free CLP also performed very well at 4.15 millimeters, Extreme Force 5.02, Frog Lube 5.67, and Fluid Film 6.59 millimeters. The mill PRF also requires that CLPs have a pore point of minus 74 degrees Fahrenheit to make sure that moving parts will actually move freely in extremely cold temperatures. So let's place the test cups in a freezer that's set to minus 40 degrees and we'll check back on this in 12 hours. To get ready for the next three tests, let's apply products to the test coupons in a long strip of metal. After applying all the products, I'll wipe off all the excess liquids and allow two hours for the products to soak into the metal. While we're waiting on the CLPs to soak into the metal, let's kick off our next test. With 100,000 miles and about 15 years of diesel exhaust exposure, this next test is really going to put each brand to the test. After applying each product, I'll allow two minutes for the product to dissolve the carbon buildup. I'll then use a drill with a microfiber towel for right at five seconds to see if each product is able to remove the carbon buildup. I'll replace the microfiber towel between testing each of the brands. And the ballast doll made easy work of removing the carbon buildup, cutting almost all the way down to the metal. There's still a very thin layer of carbon in some of the test area. After two minutes of soaking into the carbon buildup, the cleanse oil made very easy work of the carbon buildup. Ballast oil is on the left and the cleanse oil is on the right. Both brands did a terrific job, but the cleanse oil seems to have done slightly better. And a Break Free CLP did a terrific job of cutting through the carbon buildup. Even after the test was finished, you can see traces of the CLP continuing to dissolve the carbon. Just like the Break Free CLP, the Slip 2000 did a great job cutting through the carbon. Even though the Frog Lube is much more viscous than the other products, it still did a great job of cutting through the carbon buildup. Of all the brands, the Hop seems to have done the best so far. It did an amazing job of cutting through the carbon and down to the metal. Extreme Force performed very well at loosening up and removing the carbon, but not quite as well as the Hops. Just like the Hop CLP, the Hops Cleaner performed very well at removing the carbon from the metal. The Fluid Film Container describes their product as a penetrant and they did a terrific job of breaking down the carbon. And the Fluid Film seems to perform just as good as the other brands. 
Actually, all the products did a really good job and assessing performance is highly subjective. The hops in the fluid film seem to have come out on top with an A-plus rating. Most of the other brands performed nearly as well with an A rating. All the products did an acceptable job in this category. All of the products have had two hours to absorb into the metal. Moving parts of a firearm can experience a tremendous amount of heat and you definitely don't want that lubrication to dissipate. To test the ability of the CLPs to withstand heat, I'll place one set of coupons inside of an oven that's set at right at 400 degrees for right at one hour. So half the coupons are in the oven, so let's kick off our next test to see which products attract the least amount of dust. I'll first attach the test panel to the back of the truck, and then I'll drive several miles down a gravel road to see how much accumulation takes place. Not surprisingly, all the products attracted more dust than bare metal. Assessing dust collection is subjective, but the cleanse oil, which is on the right, performs slightly better than the ballastol. While it's very close, the break-free CLP performs slightly better than the cleanse oil. The Break Free CLP, which is on the left, also performs slightly better than the Slip 2000. The Frog Lube seems to have performed about the same as the Cleanse Oil, but not quite as well as the Break Free CLP. The Hops in the Extreme Force collected a little bit more dust than most of the other brands. They performed about the same as the Ballastol. And the Fluid Film performed slightly better than the lubricant that comes in the Hops Kit. If you're looking for a product that doesn't collect a lot of dust, the Break Free CLP came out on top with an A- rating. Cleanse Oil, Slip 2000, Frog Lube, Hops 9 Kit, and Fluid Film also perform very well with a B plus rating. It's been right at one hour, so let's remove the metal from the oven and allow it to cool down before we test for corrosion resistance. I didn't think the paper labels would survive the test, but fortunately, the paint on the back of all the panels held up just fine. The panels without the ruined labels have not been exposed to heat. To test corrosion, I'll apply a mist of hydrogen peroxide, vinegar, and salt just one time, and we'll check back on this in a few hours. It's been right at 12 hours since all the products were placed in a freezer that's set to minus 40 degrees. And the ballastol does not like the cold temperature, and it's frozen. Just like the ballastol, the cleanse oil is also frozen solid. And a break-free CLP, which claims to meet the requirement laid out in the mill PRF, passed this test easily. Definitely a great lubricant for cold temperatures. And the Slip 2000 doesn't flow nearly as well as the break-free CLP, but it definitely passed the test and would likely have performed fine even in colder temperatures. The frog lube was a pace before going into the freezer, and now it's very hard. And the hop CLP shrugged off the cold temperature and flowed just as well as the break-free CLP. Unfortunately, the extreme force is extremely solid right now. And the hops lubricant that comes in the kit is just as frozen as the extreme force. The fluid film has a very high viscosity at room temperature, but it's now frozen solid. So this is a very straightforward test, and the only three brands that pass this test are the Break Free CLP, Slip 2000, and Hops 9. It's been several hours since the rusting agent was applied. And the control coupon didn't have any protective coating applied, and there's a lot of rust that's formed. And the ballastol appears to have burned off inside the oven, and it appears to have just as much corrosion as the control panel. And the cleanse oil held up much better from heat exposure compared to the ballastol. The cleanse oil finished fourth overall. And the Break Free CLP performed very well in pretty much every category, but it struggled in this one with an 8th place finish just ahead of the ballastol. Just like the Break Free CLP, the Slip 2000 also experienced quite a bit of corrosion for a 7th place finish just ahead of the Break Free CLP. Heat exposure actually helped the frog lube absorb into the metal and it performed the best, experiencing very little corrosion and a 1st place finish. Just like several of the other brands, Hops really struggled to block the corrosion after heat exposure and finished in 6th place overall. Just like the Frog Lube, the Extreme Force performed very well after heat exposure with very little corrosion and a third place finish overall. And the lubricant in the Hops Kit also performed extremely well with very little corrosion and finished in second place just behind the Frog Lube. Fluid Film typically does a pretty good job at blocking corrosion, but the heat was just too much for the Fluid Film. Fluid Film finished in fifth place. For the panels not exposed to heat, the Ballastol performed better than the Control, but not nearly as well as most of the other brands with an eighth place finish. The cleanse oil has quite a bit less corrosion than the ballastol, but didn't perform as well as some of the other brands with a fourth place finish. Unfortunately, even without exposure to heat, the Break Free CLP experienced more corrosion than most of the other brands with a ninth place finish. And the Slip 2000 has quite a bit of corrosion, but it did perform better than the Break Free CLP with a seventh place finish. And the Frog Lube experienced very little corrosion compared to most of the other brands with a second place finish overall. And the Hops experienced a little bit more corrosion than average with a fifth place finish. The Extreme Force also experienced more corrosion than average and finished in 6th place just behind the hops. And the lubricating oil in the hops kit did a little bit better job than average blocking the corrosion with a 3rd place finish overall. Not surprisingly, the fluid film did a terrific job at blocking corrosion and came out on top.
If you're looking for a CLP that can handle the heat and block corrosion, the Frog Lube came out on top. The Hops Kit Lubrication finished in second, Extreme Force third, and the Cleanse Oil fourth. Without exposure to heat, the Fluid Film came out on top, but the Frog Lube finished in a close second. Hops Kit finished in third, and the Cleanse Oil fourth. The CLPs are organized from least expensive to most expensive. While none of the brands perform great at everything, some of the less expensive brands outperform some of the more expensive ones. So which brand is the best? I think that really depends on what you're looking for. Unfortunately, none of the brands were perfect. However, there were quite a few brands that performed very well. Two of the brands that really stood out to me include the Cleanse Oil as well as the Break Free CLP. Both those brands perform very well on the Lubricity Tester, which means they're going to do a great job at preventing wear on the firearm. All the videos in this channel are viewer suggested, so if you have a video idea, I hope you'll take time to leave a comment. Thanks so much for watching. Please take care and I look forward to next time.